All right, well, it is time to put down Mr. Goro's big pet. Seeing as he thought it was a good idea to equip it with a bunch of robot armor. Yeah, see, this is the mark of a really good teacher. You get your students to cover up your fuck-ups for you. So we've gone from the kin of Twilight to the breed of Dawn? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Uh, uh, okay. I don't know, I almost feel bad that I'm harping on the same point, but it's like... Consistency, guys! No, see, it's okay. By harping on the same point, you are getting into the spirit of Tokyo Zanadu. Oh, I can't even deny that. <laughs> Hell, I'm at the point where it's just like, okay, like, the whole XRC thing was, you know, a little bit cute uh, when we first started, but now it's getting really fucking annoying. So, uh... How how familiar are you all with uh, Final Fantasy XIII? Oh, Christ. And specifically, how familiar... How yeah, familiar are you with its behemoth fights? Funnily enough, I was going to point that out in the cutscene where it's like, okay, it started on its all fours and then, like, it got serious when it stood up. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much what this is verbatim. This is a Final Fantasy XIII behemoth. Okay, so yeah, just basically, uh, try to kill it before it stands up and otherwise you're fucked. You'll say, unfortunately, we will not be so lucky as to be allowed to kill it before it stands up. Great. <laughs> yeah, so, um, as you can see, uh, the Breed of Twilight hits like a fucking truck. And you have not done any damage to its actual life bar yet. Oh yeah, that's a fun part. If you have noticed... He's got these th those little robot parts. That's actual armor. You have to break those before you do real damage. Ugh. Like, this is a long, hard fight. And it will fuck you up if you are not playing extremely defensively. So, how much do you regret bringing Asuka to this fight now? Honestly... Not that much, because you have to remember that Asuka's, um, her charge attack freezes the enemy in place. So, that is extremely useful. Does that hold true for big, big boys like this, too? It does. In fact, I've already used it, and he just kind of got stuck in the middle of one of his attack animations. Oh, okay, I, I must have missed that. Okay, so there goes most of the armor, I guess. Oh, it has head armor, too. I didn't even notice that. Yeah, so there's looks like there's a chest piece and, yeah, the head armor left to go. But you are at least now actually damaging its health bar. I feel like Mr. Goro should have maybe considered that if his plan did not work out, 
that it would have just created a lot more work later on cleaning up the mess with all that armor? You know, you would think that, but that would require him to have considered that his plan might not have worked. And if there's one thing we've kind of learned over the course of this game about uh, one uh, Seiki Goro, he is an incredibly arrogant son of a bitch. You do get bonus damage for attacking the chest. It is his weak point, what with the giant glowy orb. But, man, it is... It is basically impossible to consistently hit his chest outside of, like, Asuka's casting. You, you really are better just, like, breaking the arms and then spending most of the fight just shooting his arms. Oh, here we go. So yeah, he's got a few new toys now. Uh, most notably, his big slash now causes explosions on the ground alongside that. Sure. God, you're nearly cracking 400 hits in this battle alone. And we're just barely over the halfway point. Are we gonna see a thousand here, folks? Oh god, no. I don't know what the final number is off the top of my head, but... It is a lot. I will absolutely grant you it is a huge combo number, but it is not... But yeah, just w way to ruin the suspense then, I guess. It's alright, my, my playstyle already did. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can, but you'll, you'll be able to see pretty quick, by the time we're all done, you'll see what it would have been. I mean, we're all, we were basically at 400. But yeah, you know, this is, this is what you like to see. Uh, you have two characters that are almost dead, and the, your one who isn't is blind. Blind feels like a really weird status ailment to implement in this, this style of game. Like, it's not really obscuring a whole lot there. And now because this... You know, we weren't having enough fun yet. Welcome to Phase 3, where now his weakness changes arbitrarily. Nice. And he seems to take or have more defense. Pretty sure I saw this thing at the end of Forbidden Planet. So what the fuck was that? Oh, you didn't know that he had a Big Bang? I mean, I do now. Like I said, well, okay, the thing you have to remember is that when you are playing this game, you do not realize that this is not the final boss. So, in that context, a lot of this makes sense. It does feel like they're, uh, on all the stops, that this is the big climax. No, I kind of assumed that him changing his weaknesses was, uh, like, signified by him, like, doing this, but... No, I guess the first time that happened, that was just a coincidence. Yeah, no, he can just change weaknesses whenever he wants. Yeah, at this point, it just feels like you're damage racing. I also like how uh, the Big Bang attack, it looks like it has like a kind of like black hole or vacuum effect to it where it like, it like directly sucks you into it. Yeah, that that's not a cosmetic thing. That absolutely does suck you towards it. 
So he basically stole Galaxy Man's weapon from uh, Mega Man 9 then. Hooray, we won. I was really worried. That's why I basically just stood like probably 20 feet away and just watched you without like, you know, doing anything to help you. You just know he's having his uh, fourth pack of cigarettes while he's waiting. <laughs> that was like the first thing he did when he got back. He was like, hey, White Shroud, get me another pack. This is kind of a bit more than just a fragment, Ko. Honestly, I'm surprised as much of that robot is left. Well, congratulations, Mr. Goro. You just blew, like, close to, what, a trillion yen on that fuck-up? Yuki's just like, good, now I never have to talk to any of you losers ever again. Bold of you to assume that Sora would not make him talk to her whether he liked it or not. Okay, most of you losers then. Yeah, I was gonna say, I could just see Sora dragging him by the scruff of his, uh, collar to, uh, to go hang out with the, the other guys. Invite everyone but Ryota. Now, even better, we're gonna call Ryota, then we're gonna go out of our way not to call Spika. <laughs> June will say that he's got better things to do and then crash the party as White Shroud anyway. ゆうやみの気配が消えていない。ゆうやみの気配。それって。オルデンの刻印騎士ならではの霊感。確かなのか。わからない。だが。え、え、ちょっと待って。全ての元凶はちゃんと倒しました。Yuki, it's a phone. It's not exactly Ko's fault. Shiori, 
まだ熱があるんならちゃんとベッドでこちらは地上 300m の展望フロアとなります日が沈む光景をどうかお楽しみくださいおいしおりお前ひょっとしてアクロスタワーにいるのかAlso, I, I might have been seeing things, but like, wasn't her shitty grandson also like just right there at the tower and then just took off and left her? Possibly. But, uh, but more importantly, whoever had Shiori pegged as the final boss, please come collect your winnings. Pretty sure that was me, but I don't want to brag. <laughs> Well, she had to justify her presence in the game eventually, and holy shit did she ever. So yeah, um, this is something that we made clear probably at the start of next video. But yeah, um, this is an eclipse the size of Moromiya City. Oh shit, it's time for instrumentality? I was gonna say, like, did Shiori just, like, get the Infinity Gauntlet and Thanos snap everyone? <laughs> She's removing all obstacles between her and Ko, finally, so that she can become the, the final girl. I... I guess that's one way to do that. Sure, we'll, we'll say they, they got stronger like that. Yeah, the, the XRC's bond got stronger. Are we sure they're even still alive at this point? God, could you imagine that, that was the end of the game? It would be a hell of an ending.